Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Monday, April 6th. My name is Mark Bailey. I'm a member at Ascension and I'm joined with my wife, April. Good morning. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for this morning by taking a just a moment of silent settling of our hearts. It is, is it nothing to you, all you, you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. Let us confess our sins humbly to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises, declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me and put me to the proof, though they had not, though they had seen my works, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that err in their hearts for they have not known my ways of whom I swore in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. The earth is the Lord's for he made it. O oh, come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 86. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and hear me. <clears throat> for I am poor and in misery. Preserve my life, for I am faithful. My God, save your servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful unto me, O Lord. For I will call daily upon you. 
comfort the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are good and gracious. And of great mercy to all those who call upon you. Give ear, Lord, unto my prayer. And attend to the voice of my humble supplications. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you. For you answer me when I call. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord. Nor are there any deeds like yours. All nations that have made that, that you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord. And shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. Indeed, you are God alone. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. O knit my heart to you, that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart. And will praise your name forevermore. For great is your mercy toward me. You have delivered my life from the nethermost pit. O God, the proud have risen up against me. And the company of violent men have sought after my life and have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord God, are full of compassion and mercy. Long-suffering, plenteous in goodness and truth. O turn then unto me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength unto your servant and help the son of your handmaid. Show me some token of your favor that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because you, Lord, have been my helper and comforter. Let us continue with Psalm 87. The Lord loves the foundation which he has laid upon the holy hills. The gates of Zion are dearer to him than all the dwellings of Jacob. Very excellent things are spoken of you. O city of God, I will consider Egypt and Babylon among those who know me. Behold, Philistia also, and Tyre and Ethiopia. Each one was born in her. And of Zion it shall be reported that each one was born in her. And the Most High shall establish her. The Lord shall record it, and when he registers the people, that each one was born there. The singers and the dancers also shall say, All my fresh springs are in you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson, a reading from the book of Job, beginning with the fourth chapter, the first verse. Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered and said, If one ventures a word with you, will you be impatient? Yet who can keep from speaking? Behold, you have instructed many, and you have strengthened the weak hands. Your words have upheld him who was stumbling, and you have made firm the feeble knees. But now it has come to you, and you are impatient. It touches you, and you are dismayed. Is not fear your God, is not fear of God your confidence, and the integrity of your ways your hope? Remember, who that was innocent ever perished? Or when were the upright cut off? As I have seen, those who plow iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. By the breath of God they perish, and by the blast of his anger they are consumed. The roar of the lion, the voice of the fierce lion, the teeth of the young lions are broken. The strong lion perishes for lack of prey, and the cubs of the lioness are scattered. Now a word was brought to me stealthily. My ear received the whisper of it. Amid thoughts from visions of the night, 
when deep sleep falls on men. Dread came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones shake. A spirit glided past my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern its appearance. A form was before my eyes. There was silence, then I heard a voice. Can mortal man be in the right before God? Can a man be pure before his maker? Even in, in his servants he puts no trust, and his angels he charges with error. How much more those who dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, who are crushed like the moth. Between morning and evening, they are beaten to pieces. They perish forever without anyone regarding it. Is not their tent cord plucked up within them? Do they not die and that without wisdom? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Surely it is God who saves us, saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry in aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from St. Paul's Epistle to St. Titus, beginning with the third chapter, the first verse. Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying is trustworthy, and I want you to insist on these things, so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for people. But avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. As for a person who stirs up division, after warning him twice, once and then twice, have nothing more to do with him, knowing that such a person is warped, sinful, and he is self-condemned. When I send Artemis or Tychicus to you, do your best to come to me at Nicopolis, for I have decided to spend the winter there. And do your best to speed Zenus the lawyer, and Apollos on their way to see that they lack nothing. And let our people learn to devote themselves to good works so as to help cases of urgent need and not be unfruitful. All who are with me send greetings to you. Greet those who love us in the faith. 
Grace be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to spend a couple of minutes having a reflection on what Paul, St. Paul wrote to Titus. We have just come off of Palm Sunday yesterday, and we are beginning now Holy Week. Jesus and his triumphal entry has entered into Jerusalem amidst shouts of joy and excitement, but has come into a city that is full of division, full of angst, full of worry. There are many factions and many people who are pointing fingers at one another, who are laying blame on groups of other people for all of the unrest that is within their city and they're experiencing at this time. And it is in this kind of environment that Jesus comes in, in an environment where people are trying to engage him, to question him, to rebuke him. The Pharisees, the Sadducees are all trying to entrap him. And yet Jesus has his face towards the cross. He knows where he is going. And he sets his face resolutely to what we will celebrate as Good Friday. And then eventually Easter Sunday. But as we join Christ in this walk, I want us to consider what Paul has said to Titus. It is in that first verse that he tells Titus as a leader to remind the Christians to be submissive to rulers and authorities. He doesn't say this as somebody who's just speaking something that's a good idea. He says this as a disciple of Christ and as an apostle, knowing what our Lord went into on that Holy Week, knowing what he experienced. He then goes on in that first verse to Titus to tell the Christians to be obedient and to be ready for every good work and to speak evil of no one and to avoid quarreling, to be gentle and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. Think about that for a moment. Think about how that applies to us in these days now where we are experiencing social distancing, where we are experiencing social media, where we can read anger and outrage and we can see the anxiety and the fear in people's eyes within the words and the comments that they leave, the fingers that are being pointed. Are we in that much of a different time than what Christ experienced? Granted, he experienced it more than we have, but we are still called to join in with him to walk the way of the cross, even when all of our surroundings are full of anger and despair and blame. No, Paul was very cautious of what was going on in the time of Jesus and indeed what was going on in his days when he wrote these words to Titus. And he knew what Titus was facing. And what he says is this, that we are to be submissive to the rulers and authorities, to be kind, to be gentle, because we ourselves used to be foolish and disobedient and led astray, that we ourselves were, as he says, slaves to various passions and pleasures, that we once found ourselves on the other side, that we found ourselves lost and without Christ much like our society finds itself now. That we were passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. And so Paul paints this picture of where we once were. And then he goes into verse 4. It says, But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, not because we somehow got to this point that we were just so good, that we suddenly stopped acting in hate. 
but rather that he showed us loving kindness despite the fact that we were so lost according to his own mercy by the washing and regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit when he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior so that being justified by his grace we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life that Christ has created us to be heirs, that we are no longer apart from God. We are no longer slaves to passions and pleasures. We are no longer people of fear and anxiety, of hate. But we are heirs to God, to Christ, that we have the hope of eternal life. In verses 4 through 7, Paul says in verse 8, is a trustworthy saying. And to insist on these things, that we are to act these way, this way, and that this is the hope that we have, that we are indeed heirs, so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for all people. And then he goes on and he continues to warn about foolish controversies and dissensions and quarrels, not because uh, we are still in them, but because they still lure us. They still call to us that we are not somehow heirs that are removed out of the cultures that we see and experience, but rather that we are heirs who are still in that culture and we have to guard against returning to and being drugged back into these quarrels and these dissensions. We must not be baited. We must not be lured in. Our, our, our love must be wholly and completely on Christ and on his mission and not be pulled aside by a world that wants to engage us into arguments. Again, remember the mission of our Lord Jesus. Remember what he was doing when he entered in Jerusalem. He knew what laid ahead. He knew that this wasn't an argument to be won, but a love to be displayed. And that's what he calls us to. He has called us to pick up our cross and follow him even when we walk into uh, the hornet's nest or the den of vipers or the hardest times or just into those who are lost and don't know him yet. We are called to walk with him in love, to not argue, to not quarrel, but to know that there is suffering and there is a cross before there's a resurrection, before there's a crown. And he asks us as heirs to follow him, to love him. And in doing so, to love one another. And to remember that's where our hope is. That our hope is in Christ that our hope is with our Lord and Savior. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. I invite you now to say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into morning, drive far from us all wrong desires. Incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us enter into a time of intercession. Father, we come before you and we pray, be not far from the cries of your people. Hear our prayers, O Lord. In this time, Father, of great anxiety, fear, we pray that you will send your spirit and grant us peace, a peace that passes all understanding. In this time, Father, where we know of and hear of people who are sick and suffering and, yes, dying, we pray, Father, for your healing hand to rest upon them, that you will grant peace, Father, to their bodies and to their souls. Father, in this time where we face uncertainty and financially, as many have been laid off from work and from jobs, we pray, Father, be sufficient, provide for us as you have promised to do so, for we trust in your promises. Father, we pray that you will bind us together as the church and that you will open our eyes and our ears that we might see and hear of opportunities to be a light to those who are still in darkness that during this time of social distance, that we will not forget that there are those who have been distant from you spiritually all along. Father, we pray your mercies be poured out upon us, and we trust that your grace is sufficient. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, 
We, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May God bless you and keep you until we see you again.